it is hard to put into words what exactly we witnessed today because we have not seen this before. Thousands storming the Capitol after a rally with President Trump during which he urged them to march on the Capitol, where a joint session of Congress was debating and working to certify the election as our democracy dictates. Instead, they were halted by protesters who smashed through the doors, broke their way into the Capitol, making it to the Senate chamber and throughout the Capitol, overwhelming police. Lawmakers diving for cover told to shelter in place, the country watching, the world watching, what America looked like today. The mob storming the barriers, pushing through this door, Capitol Police unable to hold them back. Others smashing through windows at the Capitol. There were so many chaotic moments, the tense interactions with Capitol Police overwhelmed. Members of Congress and their staffs rushing for cover, reporters told not to reveal their whereabouts. This image tonight of a man walking through Statuary Hall carrying a Confederate flag. Another startling image from inside the office of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Some trying to breach the House chamber, armed security barricading the door, keeping them out. Behind them, members were taking shelter, some of them on the floor, some told to grab their gas masks to protect against tear gas. In an empty Senate chamber, this Trump supporter at the front of the chamber declaring Donald Trump won that election. The march to the Capitol following those words from President Trump, speaking to his supporters, who he invited to Washington, saying, you have to show strength, telling them to march to the Hill. And as nightfall approached tonight, the heavy presence, the National Guard joining local police and the FBI, the curfew now in effect, and of course, so many questions tonight. How was this allowed to happen? Where was the security? With the president encouraging these protests for weeks now. We're going to begin tonight with our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Chaos and lawlessness striking at the heart of American democracy, breaking out after the president of the United States urged an angry mob of his own supporters to confront members of Congress and even his own vice president who were preparing to certify the election. They stormed the Capitol, clashing with police, breaking windows, scaling the scaffolding, fights breaking out in restricted areas of the building, officers outnumbered. In the House chamber, lawmakers dove for cover beneath their desks. Agents with guns drawn, their fingers on the trigger, guarding the barricaded door. We've been instructed uh, to each of us get uh, gas masks that are under our seats. The demonstrators, some in tactical gear, were urged to go to the Capitol by the president himself. We're going to walk down to the Capitol because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. Donald Trump lost the election by more than 7 million votes. His lawsuits were rejected by dozens of judges. But still, he told his followers that the election was rigged. And he demanded that his vice president reject the electoral votes and overturn the election in Congress today. Mike Pence is going to have to come through for us. And if he doesn't, that will be a, a sad day for our country. But finally, after more than four years of unfailing loyalty, Mike Pence broke with Donald Trump. The moment caught on a hot mic. Is my statement out? Yes, sir, it is. Pence's statement was blunt. I do not believe that the founders of our country intended to invest the vice president with unilateral authority to decide which electoral votes should be counted. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell broke with the president, too, telling his sharply divided Republican colleagues that this election must stand. The voters, the courts, and the states have all spoken. They've all spoken. If we overrule them, it would damage our republic forever. Our democracy would enter a death spiral. McConnell was blunt. The president did not come close to proving his false claims, he said, and he sharply criticized the 13 Republican senators who planned to challenge the election results. It would be unfair and wrong to disenfranchise, disenfranchise American voters and overrule the courts and the states on this extraordinarily thin basis. And I will not pretend such a vote would be a harmless protest gesture while relying on others to do the right thing. One of those 13 senators, 
Ted Cruz of Texas tried to make his case. I am not arguing for setting aside the result of this election. We appoint an electoral commission to conduct a 10-day emergency audit. Consider the evidence and resolve the claims. But there have already been audits and recounts and more than 30 court cases thrown out. The president's own attorney general said there was no evidence of substantial fraud. And minutes after Cruz spoke, the bedlam broke out in the Capitol. Pence was whisked to safety by the Secret Service. The building went into lockdown, but protesters were already inside, marching through Statuary Hall. One man carried a large Confederate flag just outside the Senate chamber, and inside another took to the podium himself to declare Trump had won the election. And look at this. A rioter broke into the office of the Speaker of the House and put his feet on Nancy Pelosi's desk. All over, scenes of violence and disorder. One woman was shot inside the Capitol, and ABC's Rachel Scott saw her being carried away. They brought out a woman on a stretcher, rushed her inside. We did see uh, blood gushing from her. On television and on Twitter, Republican lawmakers begging President Trump to tell his supporters to go home. Call it off, Mr. President. We need you to call this off. But for hours while his supporters rampaged through the Capitol, Trump remained inside the White House, silent. All right, so let's bring in John Carl. He's live at the White House tonight because, John, you know, after so much pressure from Republicans and Democrats alike for the president to tell his supporters to go home, late this afternoon, the president did release that one-minute video message on Twitter. In it, he again, and we should point this out, falsely claims that he won in a landslide in an election that he lost by 7 million votes before then telling supporters uh, to go home. Take a look. I know you're pain. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. And, John, the president, we were told, was watching this all play out on live television today, along with the rest of the country, but refusing to condemn the violence from his own supporters. What are you hearing tonight from your sources inside the White House about how able they are to actually communicate with the president? Well, first of all, David, Twitter, I'm told, had just removed that video because of the false statements about the election. And it's notable uh, that in that video, he actually went on to say to the people that stormed the Capitol, and this is an exact quote, Go home. We love you. You are very special. Just a short while ago, he tweeted that these are the events and the things that happen when, quote, great patriots have been badly and unfairly treated for so long. So in other words, he is actually justifying the actions of those that stormed the Capitol. As for what's going on inside the White House, very little coming out. I can tell you I've spoken to several people close to the president who are deeply frustrated, in fact, horrified by the way he has handled this. But David? as you point out, John, he did not condemn what he witnessed at the Capitol today, saying you are very special to those supporters. John, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.